Hey guys, and welcome to Quality Shot. It's time to look back at uh, what a lot of people are calling a modern day heavyweight classic, apparently. So, uh, yeah, Muhammad is not quite sure. But anyway, I'm joined by Muhammad and Kevil, <laughs> and we're going to be going over and reviewing the fight. So, obviously, for those that have been living under a rock, and maybe I don't know, have slept for the past three days in a row uh, without waking up. Uh, I can tell you now that Fury has beaten Wilder in the trilogy, uh, stopping him in round 11. Uh, a fight which had five knockdowns in the end, and pretty exciting considering, you know, Wilder got knocked down twice and then knocked out, and Fury got knocked down twice as well. Uh, so a lot of action, and I think probably a lot closer than we probably thought it was going to be. I think uh, Kev thought actually Wilder would KO Fury, to be fair. Um, Muhammad thought it would be a Fury KO um, I said something like a few KO round five when they're walking out, but um, obviously I was wrong because it's a lot later. Um, let's let's start off actually then with whether we were surprised about the fight. I'll start with you, Muhammad. I mean, were you surprised about how it panned out? And maybe let's start with Fury first, I guess. Were you surprised that he employed the tactics he did? Um, am, am I surprised? No. I mean, I think I think it would have been similar to the second fight which it was to some extent but obviously fury was not as dominant as he was in the in the second fight so so in terms of um fury himself no i'm not i'm not surprised um fury fury was ultimately implementing really good boxing ability <clears throat> really technical um really nice one twos you know slip and slide in all the things that you'd expect him to do, but also carry the power that he showcased in the in the second fight. So, I'm not entirely surprised about um, Fury's performance. Um, mm. No, I thought I thought it was a bit of a mixture of his performances in the first and second fight. I didn't think he was quite as gung ho as he was in the second fight until I think he had success kind of mid to late in that in that third fight. Uh, and in the first fight, obviously, he was very twitchy and he was kind of you know jabbing, fainting. Uh, a lot of you know nervous energy there. Okay, I want to ask you because obviously you backed Wilder. Did you think mm. maybe the extra weight literally weighed on him uh, and kind of affected him? Because it seemed like after he got knocked down in the third round, he kind of gassed a little bit. Yeah, I, I think it had both like a negative and a positive effect at the same time. Um, obviously, the extra weight would naturally tie you out quicker, which is what we saw. But it also gave him a lot of power because it gave him the power to knock. Fury down twice, which was mm. kind of incredible, considering that you know that was after Wilder got knocked down, and we thought that Wilder was pretty tired, pretty <laughs> gassed at that point, but he wasn't. Yeah. He still dropped him twice, so I guess that weight gives him that power advantage. Uh, but you know, I think as you rightly said, Fazan, that like if it got to the late rounds, he will gas, and that's exactly what happened. Um, so yeah, in the late rounds, it definitely worked against him, and when he was gassed. That's when Fury was able to get the knockout win. Yeah, agreed. I think the the weight, um, I think he probably helped him be slightly sturdier, um, obviously in the clinches, etc. But I think it kind of bit him in the backside a little bit as the fight wore on. I think he definitely was trying to get him out in the first six rounds. And there was a clear tactic that he tried to employ in the first round by jabbing to the body. Um, and he was jamming to the body, um, you know, throwing right hands to the body. And Fury was a bit like, oh, what do I do here? Um, yeah. he, he, I think he was a bit surprised about the tactic being used. And then towards the end of that first round, though, clipped him with the left hook um, as Wilder was coming in, um, as he was trying to throw to the body. And Wilder just almost was like, okay, I'm going to stop doing that. I'm just going to headhunt you and I'm going to try and knock you out now. Uh, I'm not going to stick to the game plan. So I thought that was pretty weird. I've actually got the punch stats here. So I'm going to share my screen so you guys can have a look. Um we, I, I'm assuming you guys haven't seen it yet. I haven't really looked through them properly, but it'll be quite interesting to have a look at. So you can see here, like, punches thrown. you got three, five. In fact, I'll just see. We don't need to see their faces. Um, we know who's fighting. So on the left is Wild, as you can see, Fury is on the right. So punches thrown, actually pretty similar, to be fair, in the end, which I thought, uh, considering how one-sided it was for the most part, apart from that round four, which Kev rightfully points out was really dominant, um, I think it shows that Wilder was a lot more active. Total landed, though, I think shows the quality, right? The 39% to 20%, which I think shows a little bit of, on Wilder's part, a bit of wildness. I think especially as he got hurt in that third round and, and got dropped, I thought that was um, a way. But total jabs thrown, I think you use a jab a lot more. But 
jabs mm-hmm. landed 31% to 9%. So Wilder really not as effective with the jab as he probably would have liked. And then power punches thrown. You can see Fury kind of just besting him in that as well. 43% of power shots landed, which is really impressive compared to 25% from Wilder. I'm going to ask you, Muhammad, is this just a question of Fury just being too good for Wilder? We've, we've seen it three times. We've seen three slightly different <clears throat> fights, but each time Fury... You know, obviously the first fight was a draw, but I think a lot of people thought... Uh, a lot of people do think that he maybe should have taken it, but put that to one side, still, you know, he's got a 2-0 victory and record in his trilogy. It's yeah. just a case of that Wilder has kind of given his best at some point in this trilogy, but Fury has just been too good. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, Fury... I think the, the main thing that separates the two is boxing ability um wilder obviously possesses a lot of power but you know so does so does fury obviously because he managed to knock wilder down in several situations but in a way it might also be his ability to time his punches and that Mm. that ties into boxing ability his ability to throw more frequently than wilder 39 percent to 20 percent is is clearly a sign of his superior boxing ability and that translates to power punches pardon me I was saying it's, it's about throwing at the right times, right? So he's throwing, yeah. probably countering, and that and when you counter someone, you're the, the opponent's off balance, right? And they don't see it coming. Whereas Wilder, probably, I think you can he telegraphs, you know, he kind of telegraphs his punches a lot. He, um, he did a, a lot of head, I, yeah, I agree. I think Wilder did a lot of head hunting after he stopped going to the body. I think his strategy of going to the body was a good idea, to be honest. Agreed. I don't know why yeah. he stopped using it because I think it did surprise Fury because. Wilder otherwise sometimes comes across as a guy who's looking to just go for head hunting types of punches and trying to knock yeah. you out in that in that way. One so, two, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's very predictable. I think Fury, with his awkward style, his boxing ability, his ability to slip and slide punches, keep the distance, all that kind of stuff, he, he would have he probably was perfectly fine allowing Wilder to just come in and try and go for head head hunting tactics because he could just. Um, you could just punch him while he's coming in and counter and hold and do do all the classic boxing um, boxing tech tactics that you'd normally use for someone like that who's just aggressively coming mm-hmm. in without having a proper plan. So yeah, I think Fury is just a far better boxer than Wilder, and that's the main thing. Mm-hmm. We're not say I'm not saying that Fury's more more powerful because he's not. I think Wilder packs a, a, a much stronger punch than Fury does, but. It's the fact that Fury has that that speed, that agility, and that that boxing ability, and that stronger def- defense, um, and that's that's what separates these two. And if they have a quadrilogy or whatever the heck you would call it, <laughs> the same <laughs> thing would happen. Because I think Fury, if they were to fight a hundred times, I think Fury probably is. Fury really would win like, probably eighty-five percent of the time. I reckon I mean, he'd there win might 98, be ninety-eight, ninety-nine. Yeah, I mean the, the thing is, Wilder looked. In a way, Wilder looked dangerous all the way up to maybe the fifth round, yeah. right? Because he wasn't down and out. I mean, I, I remember when we were watching it. Um, it was round three, I think, that Fury knocked Wilder down. We yeah. thought, okay, this is it, game over, right? The left hook, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was a hook, yeah. And we, we thought, that's it, this is over. And obviously, next, next round, Fury got knocked down twice. And we thought, oh, damn, maybe Fury's actually maybe sure he's actually going to get knocked out and yeah. he's, and he's not going to be able to continue but he it's obviously he was looking back. for the knockout wasn't he fury after that i think uh, which yeah. is interesting and can i want to ask you then like for, in that fourth round were you surprised that fury managed to recover the way he did because obviously you have that thing in the first fight in the 12th round the undertaker moment where he gets up and it's almost like what the hell how's he done that he had a similar not not i don't think he was as heavily dropped but the second knockdown, I think he almost looked to his corner like, crap, like I'm in trouble here. Obviously, he got up and then, to be fair to him, the rest of the fight, he just mauled Wilder, really. I think he was in control. Yeah. But were you surprised that, one, he managed to get up the second time, um, and two, that he managed to recover as quickly as he did? Um, you know what? I'm more surprised on this knockdown that he managed to get up compared to his previous knockdown, like in the previous okay. fight, purely because... This is the first time that Fury's ever been knocked down twice in the same round. And that's yeah. quite significant, I think, because I guess, look, one knockdown you can recover, but to get knocked down twice in one round must mean you, you're A, really hurt, 
and B, you might be getting a little bit sloppy because, you know, Fury's the sort of guy that if he's been dropped or if he's been caught, he'll turn on his reflexes like he did in the first fight in that 12th yeah, round. He got dropped and then he was like, okay, well, I cannot get caught like that because it really is yeah. over. So then he switched on properly. He yeah. came back a lot better. You know, he did that, um, you know, Fury, I think he's only been dropped once by some other person. I can't remember his name, but then he ended up John locking Dermot. him up. That's oh, the, no, that's Steve it. Cunningham. Steve Cunningham. Yes, yeah, Steve Cunningham. In the same way, as soon as he got dropped, he turned his reflexes on and got way better. Yeah. Here, he gets dropped and then surprisingly gets dropped again. So that's why I was yeah. like, oh, you know, this this might be yeah. really bad for Fury. He may have been badly hurt and he may not recover from this. Well, but I agree with I you. Think, yeah. yeah, but it was good he recovered. No, I agree with you. I think he did, he he wasn't as switched on this one. And there's actually a point to be had that I think this fight was the best fight out of the three, but I don't think this was the best fight technically. If you're looking at it from a boxing point of view, I think in the first fight Fury boxed a lot better, considering he came back from a, like a you know whatever it was a however many year layoff, lost twenty stone, and in the second fight he was flawless really. Um, yeah. I thought personally, I think Wilder probably fought his best fight in this fight. I would imagine that's how I saw it. Um, I actually think Wilder fought the best that he has in all three because in the first one, he got he just hardly threw and he was made to look silly. I thought personally, and Fury, I think this was his worst performance potentially, considering that in the first fight he'd come off that long layoff, and then this fight, um, I think he got sloppy in moments. I think there was a slight lack of motivation because he wanted the AJ fight. Um, and I think it, he did really well to come out of it with the win, to be fair, um, considering the kind of lack of... You know, he definitely didn't want this fight. Uh, so to get himself up for it and perform the way he did, I thought, obviously, it's still he still boxed very well. But I just... I don't think this is anywhere near the Tyson Fury um, of the second fight or the kind of to anywhere near his top level. And that's what I think made it into an interesting fight, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. I want to ask you though, Muhammad, as a as a Fury fan, do you think that uh, Tyson Fury uh, kind of we're going to talk? Actually, before we go into that, is there anything you guys want to touch on more specifically about how the fight went? Uh, well, I mean, I, I do want to say that I do think this, you know, notwithstanding the the two knockdowns in the fourth round, yeah. I think Fury pretty much won every single round, um, other than the first round. Agreed. Yeah. So I. So although yes, I agree that it wasn't his best performance. He certainly did much better in the second fight than he did in this fight. Yeah. I also think that it wasn't particularly competitive, other than the threat that came in that um, fourth round. Agreed. Otherwise, I was I was very much comfortable that Fury could easily glide to a points win if he wanted to, so long as he doesn't catch one of those bronze bomber hooks or something like that. All he needed to do was just to survive the rest of the rounds, and he was doing a perfectly fine job doing so. But I think he wanted the knockdown. He wanted the he wanted a TKO or a KO victory. He did, yeah. And that's yeah. why he was slightly sloppy at points. Agreed. I think he went looking for it. And that's probably why he got clipped because he. Uh, uh, it's funny, right? Because we heard Sugar Hill Sheward say, I think it was in the fifth round, the end of the round, he said, Jab, jab. And you know what? That's really weird because the Kronk Gym is known for getting KOs, but he wasn't saying like jab for the whole fight. He was saying, Look, for the next few rounds, you need to jab because at the moment you're getting clipped and he shouldn't be in. And Fury was trying to throw and Wilder, even though he was hurt and he looked like he could, he could go at any moment um as you know as what as wilder would say timber i shouldn't say that i'll probably get a little sick from the wild fans but um <laughs> but like no he should have he should have he showed a lot of fight to be fair right considering genuinely it looked like he was on unsteady legs from fourth round onwards it looked like any punch and he could be on the floor like laid out basically uh but he still managed to he was like a wounded animal he was still dangerous he was still clipping fury at times um an interesting thing apparently after he knocked fury down the first time he broke his hand doing it, which is quite interesting. And he's had issues breaking his hand because he punches so hard, probably. Um, and the way that he punches, I think, in terms of like the speed, of the way that he punches, I think he has issues with his hands. But that was quite interesting. Obviously, it didn't change; it wouldn't have changed the outcome of the fight. But that was interesting. Um, 
but yeah I, I agree with you like i think fury wasn't up to his best but it wasn't a poor performance either i just think he got a bit lackadaisical thinking oh i'm, bl- I'm gonna blast him out like in the second fight and wilder was at a, a better level for sure um okay i want to ask you actually then for wilder i mean do you just think it's a case of Fury is just his bogey man and he could potentially beat anyone else in the division? Or is it, oh, he might have got a little bit found out? Um, I, I do think that overall Fury is just a bit of boxing than Wilder. And I think the only way Wilder could beat him is by almost like how he did in that fourth round, getting those kind of lucky one, two right hands, catching him really off guard. But, you know, I'd say 90% of the time, at nine out of 10 fights, Fury would win. Yeah, there's a chance that Wilder could beat him in a fight, yeah. but you know he's just risking it by keep going at him. Do, do you think Wilder see, wins yeah. against the rest of the heavyweights? Uh, that's a good question. I think he wins against a fair few of the heavyweights. Um, you know what? I I wouldn't actually be surprised if Wilder would beat Joshua if they were to fight, mm-hmm. uh, just based on you know Joshua's like losses as well recently. I do mm-hmm. think there's a potential Wilder could beat him. And I think Wilder versus Dillian White could be an interesting one. He could still beat him. But because like he, he didn't actually do bad against Fury, if you think about it. Like he lost, but Fury's a great boxer. So he Agreed. didn't do bad considering he's knocked him down twice in this fight. He's survived yeah. quite well. To be fair, so he's got think, two you know, losses, but it's the same person, isn't it? Yeah, and I think Wilder's not like he's not like the most skilled boxer, but he I think he can beat a lot of decent heavyweights in the division at the moment, I'd say. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think um, it might just be a case of that's his bogeyman, right? Yeah. Uh, and it, most yeah. people have it in their career. Not many people finish undefeated. There's always, uh, you know, one opponent which has got your number and styles, as the cliche is, make fights, right? And clearly Fury's style is very difficult for Wilder to, to combat, clearly. And we've seen it three times and all three times he struggled massively with it. Um, I want to ask you, Mohammed, as well then, like for Fury... Uh, obviously, has Wilder made him look better than he is in the three fights because of his limited boxing ability, or has or is Fury just that good? Um, no, I think I think Fury is really just that good. To be honest, I mean, Wilder obviously is the um, the guy who's dominated the way that people see Fury over the last year and a, a year and a bit. But obviously, Fury's beaten a number of other top-class fighters in his in his career. Um, he does need to fight Usyk. He does need to fight Joshua. He does need to fight White because we want to see that as well to confirm that he is, mm. you know, the um, the great heavyweight that everyone at this point now believes that he is. To be honest, um, but let's not let's not kind of discredit Wilder because Wilder is uh, as, as Mayweather might have said a hell of a fighter right he's <laughs> Wilder's very good Wilder is very good I I remember um, I know you had asked Kev who who does Wilder be otherwise and like where does Wilder stand and you know who does he lose to and I think Wilder would only otherwise have issues with um with Joshua and Anusik, but I think he he potentially beats every other fighter in the heavyweight division. Mm. Obviously, he can't beat Fury, but I think he would struggle with Wilder versus Joshua. I think would be like a 65 35 fight yeah, in favor agreed. of Joshua. So, shoot out though, isn't it? Probably, yeah. And Wilder Usik, I think, is more like a 80 20 in favor of Usik, agreed. Yeah, but uh, otherwise, I think yeah. he he poses a very good threat to every other single boxer in the heavyweight division. So he probably falls around three, four, in my eyes, um, yeah. to be determined when he does eventually. I assume, hopefully, he'll fight Joshua or Usyk or White or you know some someone else. And it, we just need a few more fights in order to fully establish where we are right now in the heavyweight division. Because although Tyson Fury appears to be at the top, Usyk mm. has challenged that given his defeat over Joshua, and we haven't even seen Fury Joshua yet. So yeah, no, I um, agree. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I think. 
I, I think um, I want to ask you, Kev, because that's a really good point, and it leads me quite nicely on to the everyone keeps on talking uh, uh, since the the fight's ended. It's like Fury's the best of this current generation. Like he's the best heavyweight of this current generation, and he's a he's a you know he's a generational great. And I'm mm. like, that's fine, but they they almost speaking as if like the careers are over, and I, and I don't really like yeah, him talk like this because he could lose in his next fight. Imagine if he fought Dylan White, gets knocked out. Oh yeah, is okay. L- judging by what how the you know fights have gone from both fighters, it's quite unlikely. Mm. I get that, uh, and I get that he at the moment is the number one, no doubt. I think it's it's pretty certain. I think Usyk is definitely obviously very close behind him, but he's only faced a few fighters, Usyk as well. Um, and Joshua is the only kind of A level fighter you can say Usyk's faced. Fury's faced two in Klitschko and, and Wilder, right? So fine, like I get that Fury's number one, um, but I, I don't think you can start talking as if you know it's a done deal. It's not a done deal until he fights AJ and Usyk um, at least, right, Kev? What do you think? Yeah, no, I fully agree. I think the reason why everyone's hyped up Fury so much is because obviously he rose he rose massively to fame when he beat Klitschko. He he ended his ten year whatever streak it was. Yeah. You know, Joshua beat him as well, but I mean Joshua did it after Fury yeah. ended his streak. So I think. After that Klitschko fight, everyone's like, man, Tyson Fury is the best. And so far, he has proved himself by by constantly winning and now beating Wilder. So based on the current fights that have happened, I think it is fair to put him as the top. But yeah, you're, you're right to say, you can't just say he's the best heavyweight now until he's fought Usyk and Joshua. Maybe, I did say, maybe even once he's fought them twice. And if only then if he beats them, then I guess you could say he is the best. Um, but until now, yeah, he's he's the best in terms of for who he's fought. Absolutely. Yeah, no, no, I agree. I agree. Um, I, I just want to see them fight, all fight each other. So hopefully that yeah. happens. So that's that's what I want to see. 